Worries about obesity are growing along with waistlines. A new report suggests it's not just North Americans who are in trouble, it's billions of people around the globe. CTV's David Emery checks in with a dietitian to learn how you can give yourself a checkup. Obesity is obviously a big concern, a big worry, uh, not only here, but uh, around the world. Jane Dummer is a registered dietitian. Jane, there's been a new report out just recently saying that we've got billions of people in trouble. Uh, how serious is it? Well, it's a very important and complex issue. And what I tell people is we need to take some responsibility. So what can we do ourselves for this obesity crisis? I like to call it a crisis rather than an uh, epidemic. So I talk about my energy equation, food, fitness, and sleep. And what I talk about with food is I make sure that people know how to cook, learn how to cook, or live with somebody who knows how to cook. That's one definite part with the food. Now this report though, it's saying two billion people in the world, um, that's rather astounding. Um, how are so many people in trouble? And I think that's my second part, the fitness. So lifestyle activity with all the electronics these days, we're not doing lifestyle activities. Before we used to get up and answer the phone. Now we don't get up and answer the phone. Before we used to walk into the bank to do our banking. Now we don't even walk into the bank. So all that lifestyle activity has diminished and so that is gaining weight. People can gain up to 10 pounds a year just by, at, or just by not doing that lifestyle activity. So when I talk about fitness, I talk about not only lifestyle, but having an exercise plan as well. This problem affects a lot of people, not only in North America, where you would think this would be a problem, but in Africa. Uh, is that uh, alarming? What's happened there? In other countries, um, again, it's looking at ease of lifestyle. So they're not, uh, years ago in many different countries, we'd farm, we'd get up, we'd work 12 hour shifts, we'd maybe eat more, but we worked it off. All around the world, we're, again, we're finding ease of lifestyle, so that's, that's a concern. Also, we're seeing convenience foods, and that goes back to my original talk about learn how to cook, and if you're not cooking, get back to cooking. And all you really need to do is about five to 10 healthy meals, and just keep repeating those, and you'll be in great, great shape. Healthy foods, obviously, as we see here behind us, but one of the issues, um, they're talking about not only convenience foods, but what we would call junk foods, uh, soft drinks, for example, perhaps much more prevalent in some of these nations now? So what's important is to get back to what we know as healthy foods, and that hasn't changed. That science has not changed. So we know eating more fruits and vegetables is good for us. So we need to choose those foods, and then we can get the indulgent foods um, just once in a while. Those indulgent foods shouldn't be everyday foods. Now, perhaps not an epidemic, but um, there are some serious problems. Again, when we're talking 2 billion people worldwide considered to be overweight. So how do we address this? It's two ways. It's culturally and our own responsibility. So as I mentioned, the equation of food, fitness, and sleep. Sleep is a big concern in, in many countries. Adults need eight hours of sleep, and children need 10 hours of sleep. And we're so overscheduled, we're taking tablets and iPhones to bed with us, not a good idea. Not on the laptop till midnight. So getting uh, proper sleep. So that's what you know we can do ourselves. And then culturally, society, the food supply. We need to make sure that that's changing and us what we can do is not buy as many of those indulgent foods. The more we buy the more they'll make so we have to you know think about that as well. Culturally again um, looking at activities for kids, uh, good, fit, or good food programs in the schools, all of that are other things that can be taken more on a society basis. What are the potential dangers here if we don't do something, if we don't address this serious situation? Well, it's very serious because we're seeing higher childhood obesity, and that leads to type 2 diabetes, it leads to heart disease, it leads to other chronic diseases such as cancer, and once children are obese, it's, it's you know, we need to get them down because we're seeing in the States kids at the age of 18 having heart bypass surgery. If we, uh, again, don't address this, uh, some serious consequences, I suppose, not only for the, 
our younger generation, but looking at the healthcare system uh, going forward, some serious, serious costs here? Very serious costs. And because we're a publicly funded system, we're spending so much money on our diseases right now. Certainly, uh, we need to spend more money on our prevention, and the costs are, can, will be phenomenal. Registered Dietitian Jane Dummer, thank you very You're much. Welcome. My certainly, pleasure. Certainly some excellent tips there. Back to you.